100,000 people marched through downtown Los Angeles today. This is day six of Occupy LA, and you're watching Inside Out News. We are the people of California, and we demand and we expect better. So I want to tell them this. Hey, big banks, you can hide. We can see your greedy side. Hey, big banks, you can hide. We can see your greedy side. Hey, big banks, you can hide. We can see your greedy side. Hey, big banks, you can hide. We can see your greedy side. Hey, big banks. Our comrades and our brothers and sisters in the struggle occupy Los Angeles! Today, a rally held by Make the Banks Pay of California brought out 2,000 demonstrators, including about 40 demonstrators from the Occupy Los Angeles encampment. They met over on Grand Street at the California Plaza where there were many of the banking institutions in the United States ha hold their corporate offices. From there they marched to another, another building where Citigroup is located and also to another where Bank of America's corporate offices is held. From there they marched down Grand Street over to a Bank of America branch where 10 of the demonstrators from Make the Bank Pay entered the branch building. They were immediately locked in the building by security. The front entrance was taped off and inside, you could, from outside you can see the protesters up against the glass cheering and chanting, holding up protest signs. They took a giant check into the branch that was made out to the people of California. It, it was, to, they wanted to cash this check of $673 billion in the name of the people of California. The, the, the 2,000 or so protesters who did not go into the branch remained out in the center of the street, of the, where, of the intersection. On, on the south side and on the west side of the intersection, you could see police officers. Uh, they were doing crowd control. They, they blocked off the streets so that no cars could come through. I saw about 40 police officers. Some of them were in light riot gear. There was a, a truck which had about 10 or so police officers uh, sitting there waiting in, in case something happened. It reminded me a bit of the Keystone Cops of the silent film era. Um, however, they weren't here to get a laugh. They were quite serious. Uh, in the center of the intersection was a giant truck that held other protesters and some of the main organizers. They were blasting music. They were playing a lot of resistant songs, a lot of Bob Mar. Marley music to pump up the protesters. The 10 protesters that were trapped inside the Bank of America were then uh, allowed to leave, but they chose to remain in the bank, knowing that if they remained, they would be arrested. They gave the police officers no choice but to arrest them. Each one was brought out, one after the other, and brought into a police van. As each protester was arrested and brought out of the bank, you could hear cheers from the crowds. Uh, as they brought the last protester out that was arrested, uh, the crowd began cheering, we will be back, we will be back, we will be back. None of the protesters from the Occupy Los Angeles encampment were arrested in this act of civil disobedience. As I said, only about 40 of the protesters from here join the 2,000-person march. That the march was not organized by the Occupy Los Angeles people. As I said, it was organized by the Make the, Make the Banks Pay of California. 
the, the Occupy Los Angeles people, they had the option of participating in the event. And even though there's about probably 200 people here in City Hall throughout the day, only about 40 chose to participate. But they, as I said, they were not part of the group that was arrested. Those were part, those people who were arrested were from the Make the Banks Pay of California. I had an opportunity to interview some of the people who were in the march and I wanted to share some of their comments, some of the reasons why they decided to come to the march and let's go to that now. Uh, she said, my name is Julie Chow and I do, I'm a home care worker. And why, why, why are you here? Okay. Uh, so she said, I'm here today because I think the bank should be paying taxes and that, you know, our government have used our tax dollars to help them and it's not fair that they're not paying their taxes. What do, what do you do? What's your job? I have no job. I'm in a homeless shelter due to no job. What did you do before? I was a professional community interventionist, a drug and alcohol specialist, and a wonderful mother. <laughs> but I have no work now, and all my money depreciated, so I'm in a shelter. How long have you been in the shelter? I've been in the shelter now six months. Wow. Uh, do, do you have children? All of my children are grown, thank God. <laughs> and it's just me. So why are you? Why did you come out to the march? Because I believe in what we're doing, and in order for things to change, people have to get up off their couches and do something about it. Because this could be anybody. I can be anybody. Soy la Ramirez y andamos aquí en esta lucha por los banqueros para que ellos también paguen impuestos como pagamos nosotros. Por eso andamos en esta marcha para ver si nosotros nos beneficiamos por nuestros sueldos, porque ellos eh, son unos ladrones los de los bancos, así es que es justo que, que ellos eh, paguen más impuestos. Gracias. Today I had an opportunity to interview a man named Art Flores. Art Flores was one of the main organizers in the 60s and 70s in the anti-war and Chicano movement here in Los Angeles. Uh, I got a chance to talk to him a bit about the differences between the movement then and the movement now and any, if he had any kind of advice for the, the occupiers here at City Hall. Here's what he had to say. Do you think the protesters of today have learned from the mistakes of the protesters of the past, in particular in regards to the violence and, or the, the approach to nonviolent protest? versus rioting? I, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, but keep in mind that, uh, that the East LA riots, the original ones, were started not, not by the, the people. We were having a peaceful protest. The sheriffs attacked the people, unprovoked. And that's been quantified and quantified. Uh, and the people were just trying to defend themselves. There was, there was uh, the, that, the, the, that initial riot where Ruben Salazar was killed. It was again not a riot that was started by the people, but it was started by the sheriffs, whose intent was solely to break up the, the demonstration at Salazar Park, what is now Salazar Park. But yes, I hope that they, they've learned from the Martin Luther King uh, marches, that kind of thing. Do you think it's enough to march on the banks or do you think people need to go to Congress to to the politicians and politicians and legislators and ask for change for new uh, re regulations to be in, put in because ultimately uh, the bankers they can donate as much money as they want but ultimately it's the legislators who make the laws that regulate the banks. But the legislatures are all already bought by these corpor corporations. And that includes Democrats as well as Republicans. I, I have trouble with this question because going to the legislatures is going to the, to, to the same people that, that have been bought off by, by the large corporations. Why have the banks not been broken up? 
and that was one of Obama's uh, reasons, uh, uh, one of his platform things when he came into office to break up the big banks. No, nothing has been done. Uh, instead of uh, instead of breaking them up, uh, he uh, through his administration he bails them out. Instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, prosecuting these banks, he's keeping them alive. Uh, but that's just one aspect of it, and and I have a lot of problems in in dealing with the question: Do we go to our legislators? Can we actually? I think if, if the movement gets big enough, you can finally put enough pressure so that they can do that. Whether that can happen or not, I don't know. But going to the legislature directly right now is, is uh, I think, uh, an effort in futility. Do you have any advice to give the new generation of demonstrators um, as someone who's experienced so much being involved, being a part of the various movements in the 60s and 70s? Are there any uh, mistakes that you guys made that you'd like the protesters today not to make? Well, I think the most important thing is follow through. Don't, don't, don't quit once you've got, gotten whatever you thought you were going for and then walk away from it and hope it's going to work. Continue to follow through. Uh, do not be uh, lackadaisical about, uh, about these things. Follow through. No se dejen. Ya basta. Avientense en raza. That's my advice. <laughs> Tomorrow, the Answer LA Coalition will be holding their march at the Federal Westwood Building starting at 4.30 p.m. They are protesting the 10th anniversary of the Afghanistan war. I just wanted to take a moment out from the reporting to talk about an article that was published in the Christian Science Monitor. I was quoted in this article as saying, I am watching these developments from the inside and I am really struck by how the mainstream media has tried to write off this as a bunch of hippies. She says, I consider it my contribution to help correct that misconception. They also wrote that I was working here as a protester and a journalist for Inside Out News. I am a journalist first and foremost. I am not here as a member of the protesters of Occupy Los Angeles. I do work out of the media tent and I do lend my equipment to anyone who needs it. But I'm not necessarily a protester. My job here is to do independent journalism, to give you the facts as I see them here. Yes, I am a, a human being and, and, and I am not perfect and there are times when I cannot be impartial because that is just part of human nature. But my goal is to give you an impartial report and to let the people I interview here help you decide what your opinion is on what is going on here. I let them speak for themselves. I, I told the reporter who came over and interviewed me that what I am doing as a journalist is my act of protest. My act of protest against what, the, what is wrong with journalism in the United States today. The media is owned by corporations. It is institutionalized. Journalism has been co-opted in this country. I am here expressing my First Amendment right, and that is the freedom of the press. I am part of the free press. I am not owned by a corporation that does not pay taxes. I am one journalist here doing my job in the tradition of true journalism. I also wanted to note that I never said that I was struck by the portrayal of the, uh, of the protesters here as hippies. I have been here since day one because I anticipated this. As I said, journalism in the United States has been co-opted. It is owned by corporations. The news that you get on cable TV are from 
news organizations that are owned by corporations such as GE and Comcast. Those organizations have an agenda. I do not have an agenda. My job is just to report the news. I spend my day here, I do my work here, I talk to the protesters so that you can learn about what is here and so that you can decide for yourself. And that's, that's really the bottom line. I'm, I'm just a journalist. I, I'm, I'm not really a protester here. I, I'm just here to do my job. I wish that the Christian Science Monitor would have done a little bit of a better job um, putting out a more accurate quote. I understand that they have to sensationalize the news to get hits. I don't. I'm not here to sensationalize. I, I don't make money off of my reports here. I, I, I make my money doing freelance work. But I, I feel that, that journalism is lacking and, and I'm here to fill that void. So if you've come across that article, just keep that in mind, that I'm here to do my job in the tradition of journalism, in the tradition of free press, and that's all. I hope that this is the first and last time that I have to take time to give a type of special comment. My, all I care about is reporting the news from Occupy Los Angeles and any of the protests that are associated with Occupy Los Angeles. Thank you. This is Margot Pius signing off for Inside Out News. I will see you tomorrow. Good night.